Welcome everyone. Today we are going to learn how to make indigenous bubble CPAP in two minutes. So we are go not going to learn about what is CPAP and what are the basic mechanisms and what are the benefits and uh, what are the evidence of using CPAP in uh, children. We are just going to learn how to make indigenous bubble CPAP. Indigenous bubble CPAP means if you don't have the sophisticated classical CPAP machine available in your setup because the majority of in our majority of setups in our countries are very resource limited and there is a good chance that you may not have adequate number of classical sophisticated bubble CPAP machines. So in that scenario, how do you make an indigenous bubble CPAP arrangement in two minutes? So uh, just one slide, the ventilatory support in sick children, CPAP is like a midway between free flow oxygen and positive pressure ventilation. That means basically what you do, we deliver oxygen with some amount of positive pressure so that it provides an intermediate support, respiratory support in between, uh, in between giving just free flow oxygen and providing positive pressure ventilation is a midway. So what are the things we need for uh, making our indigenous CPAP arrangement? We need nasal prongs of appropriate size or nasal cannula. Second thing is we need an oxygen pipe. Third thing is we need the pediatric IV drip set with pedichamber, this one. Uh, next, we need a three-way stopcock. And next, we need a pair of scissors. And of course, we need a oxygen source, preferably central oxygen supply. Or if we don't have that, we can use an oxygen cylinder also. Or sometimes even we can use an oxygen concentrator also. So first let's look at how to prepare. So if you look at one, uh, one end of this pedichamber set, you will find that there is a rubber cap there. So with the help of the scissors, you just remove the rubber cap. So that becomes like this, there's an opening there. So by this opening, you can insert water up to some level and uh, next what we will do the opening, I'll tell. The rubber cap has been removed. So now you cut the pipe of this pedi chamber here and tie it up. You close this uh, thing and tie it up and so that we have another pipe. So what we have done till now, we have removed the rubber cap and we have cut the pipe and tied it here so that fluid cannot come here, it is stopped. Then what do we do? We via that opening created by removing the rubber cap, we insert the pipe that we just cut out from this pedichamber. So we insert the pipe there. You can see the pipe is inserted there. Next what you do? You take the three-way stopcock. You remove the both white caps there and you remove the white cap there also. So now this three-way stopcock, all these sides are open as marked by this arrow, all these sides are open. So there are three ports to the three-way stopcock. Uh, there are three openings. So what do we do? We attach the three opening, openings of the three-way stopcock to these three things. From here, we attach the open end of the IV pipe. The other end is going inside the pedi chamber we saw. So this is the open end of the IV pipe. We attach this to this. We attach the oxygen pipe to one and we attach the uh, open end of the nasal cannula to another. So three ends of the three-way stopcock are attached to this. One end is attached to the IV, open end of the IV pipe, another end is attached to the uh, oxygen pipe, another end is attached to the oxygen uh, nasal cannula. So, so as you can see here, this end is, has been attached to the nasal cannula, this end has been attached to the oxygen pipe and the this one will be attached to this open end of the IV pipe. Before uh, attaching the IV pipe, you will notice that there is a plastic thing here. So you can't attach it actually here. You just remove the plastic thing. You have removed it and the rubber thing will easily attach to the open end of the three-way stopcock. So open end of the IV pipe has been connected after removing the small plastic portion. Now it will look like this. The three-way stopcock with open these three ways it will look like one end has been attached to the open end of the IV pipe, another end has been attached to the oxygen pipe, another end has been attached to the uh, appropriate size nasal cannula. Now you attach the open end of the oxygen pipe, the another portion to the central oxygen supply and keep a flow of at least 4 to 6 liter per minute confirmed by the bubbling in the chamber. The open end of the IV pipe 
uh, this uh, is one pipe the oxygen pipe the open end of the IV pipe has been dipped inside the pedi chamber containing some amount of water as I told before and the open and other end of the nasal cannula is attached to the or uh, applied to the patient so what happens three things are attached here one thing is attached to the oxygen source the oxygen pipe another thing nasal cannula is attached to the patient and the IV pipe has been dipped in the pediatric chamber and this is the central arrangement this portion has been this is the oxygen pipe the other end of which is connected to the oxygen source this portion is the nasal cannula side the other end of which has been connected to the patient this is the IV pipe that we cut out from the pedi chamber the other end of which has been dipped inside the pediatric chamber so now if you see the pipe is coming from the oxygen source going inside there is bubbling and this is the three-way connection from that the nasal cannula is connected to the patient so rather than giving just plain oxygen if a patient is having increased work of breathing respiratory distress and we don't have enough number of uh, classical sophisticated bubble CPAP machines we can use this setup to make an indigenous CPAP which will take just hardly two minutes and apply it to patients and it will be beneficial rather than giving just free flow oxygen so if you like this video press like share with your friends residents and pediatricians and subscribe to the channel for more such videos thank you